Hey, in this video, I'm gonna take you through five of the biggest mistakes that I see tennis players making, and more importantly, how to fix them. Now, during my coaching career, I've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of players at all levels. And these five mistakes are the most common I've seen. And I will guarantee that you may not know it, but you'll be making at least three of them. So hopefully this video is gonna help you out. So the first mistake is possibly the most important as if you make this mistake, it can create tons of other mistakes afterwards and it's late preparation. Now, this is a mistake that I guarantee you're making. If you're not making it all of the time, you're gonna be making it sometimes. Now, late preparation can be caused by a number of factors, but the main one is anticipation. Having the ability to read the depth of the oncoming ball, the speed, the spin, the height and the direction, which is not easy. And especially when you're getting started with tennis, your reading skills are so important. Now, once you've honed those reading skills, it still doesn't guarantee that you're gonna prepare early enough. In fact, the better you get at tennis, the tougher your opponents become. And with that faster and heavier ball incoming, you have even less time to prepare. So no matter how good you are, you always need to focus on early preparation. One of my favorite exercises to improve the speed of your preparation is called beat the bounce. And you can use this exercise anytime you're on the tennis court, whether you're playing a match, you're doing a training session, you're hitting with the ball machine, and your aim is to make sure that your feet and your racket are fully prepared before the ball bounces on your side of the court. This is gonna give you enough time to execute the shot with balance, stability, and control, but it's also gonna give you more options when you're playing matches. When players first do this exercise, most of them are surprised at how late they're preparing. Most players are only just starting their backswing as the ball bounces, and this is clearly too late. So next time you're playing, whether you're rallying or doing a drill, try to figure out if you're fully prepared before the ball bounces or if it's afterwards. And if it is afterwards, then work on trying to make it earlier. I know this drill sounds super simple, but it's such a good way to get you preparing earlier. Now, the second big mistake that I see links to the first one, and it's ball watching. Now, what I mean by ball watching is after players strike the ball, they tend to look to see what the ball's doing and what their opponent's doing, rather than recovering ready for the next ball. Now, this loses them one to two seconds on the next shot, often causing them to prepare late for the next ball. When I see beginners, club level players, and even advanced players playing, they're often moving quickest to the ball and much slower when they're on the way back. But when you look at professional tennis players, it's completely the opposite. They move calmly and fluidly to the ball because they've got extra time. And after their shot, they recover explosively to give themselves extra time to glide to that next ball. Now, a simple exercise that I do to improve recovery is very similar to beat the bounce. This time it's called beat the hit. And your aim is to be back in a solid athletic ready position before your opponent hits the ball at the other end. Again, you can do this anytime you're on a court hitting with another player. During a rally, just have a look to see them contacting the ball. And as they do contact the ball, you should be ready. Now, clearly this is gonna to be tougher on certain balls. If you're put under pressure, like you're pulled out wide or you're pushed backwards, you may need to hit that ball slightly higher and slower to buy yourself time to get back to a solid ready position. But if you're hitting the ball from the center of the court near to your ready position, then you can go a little bit bigger with it. This drill is not only great for improving your recovery, but it's also great for developing good shot selection as well. Now, the third big mistake that I see players making is more of a technical one, primarily around ground strokes and serves, and it's overusing their arms. Now, if most of the force that you create is through your arms, not only can that cause injury, but it's also gonna cause inefficiency. You're gonna lack in power, depth, spin, and control. Ideally, we want to be making more use of our bigger muscle groups like our legs and our core. Now, one way you can check if you're doing this well or not is to look at how you prepare your racket on both your forehand and your backhand. Now on your forehand side, as you prepare the racket, you should keep your spare hand or your offhand on the racket all the way through your preparation until you get to the side here. What I see lots of players doing wrong is they separate their hands too early. Now, as you can see, my hands are moving independently. This creates a single arm movement through the swing instead of using my entire core swinging through the ball. On the backhand side, it's different depending on whether you're using a single-handed backhand or a double-handed backhand. But for the single-handed players, again, you want to keep your spare hand on the racket for as long as you can through that preparation phase before you drive your rotation and swing through the ball. One more. 
Hey! What lots of players do is they let go too soon and they swing with their arm. By keeping that spare hand on the racket on both sides, it really helps you to increase that coil that you get with your upper body and your trunk, allowing you to generate force from the bigger muscle group. A good way to think about this on a double-handed backhand is to get your chin resting over your front shoulder here. As you can see, I've got a nice upper body coil and my chin is sitting on my shoulder before I strike the ball. If you're unsure if you do this well or not, you can always film yourself and just take a look at what your spare hand is doing. And if you're preparing the racket with both hands, that's a good indication that you're using your upper body pretty well. The fourth big mistake that I see players making is with regards to their return position. And I see far too many players jamming themselves up when returning serves. The most common thing I see is them standing on the baseline and not giving themselves enough room to step into the oncoming ball. What you need to try to do is figure out roughly where you're going to be returning the ball from. Is your opponent gonna make you hit from the baseline? If they're a weaker server, you may be returning from inside the court. And equally, if they're a bigger server, you may be making contact behind the baseline. But wherever you think you're going to return the ball from, you need to start at least two big steps back from that position. This is gonna give you enough space to move onto the oncoming ball, not only giving you more space, but giving you more time to return as well. A simple drill that I like to do to help people to improve their return position is the Y drill. Think of a Y shape in front of you. As your opponents throw the ball up, you're gonna take a step forwards before split stepping as they contact the ball. From the split step, you'll be ready to dart to the left for a backhand. Hey! to the right for a forehand, or even run around a body serve. But the key is to start further back, to move in as they toss the ball up, and to split step as they make contact with the ball. I've made a more detailed video on this, and I'll pop a link in the description below. The fifth big mistake that I see players making is not spending enough time working on their second serves. Now, generally speaking, if players practice their serves, which generally doesn't happen enough anyway, but when they do, they tend to focus around their big first serve. They work on hitting it fast, they work on hitting it near to the lines, but rarely focus on their safer second serve, which leads to players having a massive contrast between their big first serve and a very pushy second serve. Now, to be honest, your second serve is as important as your first serve, as your first serve percentage is generally anywhere between 50 and 70%. And so from 30 to 50% of the time, you're gonna rely on your second serve, which if it's weak, your opponent's gonna take advantage of. Now, when it comes to my second serve, I want it to be reliable. And one way that I can make my serve more reliable is by adding net clearance. So what I like to do when working on my second serve is I pop my tennis rackets into the net. So I thread the grip through like so, so that the racket head sits above the net tape here. I'll do a couple of them like so. And so when I'm serving, my target is to clear those two rackets before the ball lands in the service box. Something else to add when working on second serve is you need to prioritize adding spin, whether that's slice or top spin, and really accelerating through the ball. By adding spin to a serve, you can create bigger margins. As I said, you can give the ball a little bit more net clearance, and that spin's gonna allow the ball to dip down into the service box, lowering the risk of it going long. You also don't want to aim your second serves so close to the line. So you'll see when I practice my second serve here that I'm aiming slightly further from those lines. So you can see there with that spin I was able to fully accelerate through the ball without increasing my risk as I was clearing the net pretty well using those rackets as targets to avoid but also aiming into the big parts of the service box. Don't neglect your second serves. So as I say they were five of the big mistakes that I see tennis players making. Let me know in the comments below if you're guilty of making any of those yourself and hopefully some of those things that I mentioned afterwards will help you to improve your tennis. If you're wondering where those big serves were coming from it's so I had a little bit of help from Ollie over there. Um, so yeah, big shout out to Ollie B Tennis. Follow him on Instagram. Yeah, I've got to run 199 now. 199, get him to 200 followers, team. Get him to 200 followers. Anyway, big thanks as always for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Let me know in the comments below if you make any of those mistakes or if you're perfect like me. <laughs> oh, that's too light now. I'm not gonna lie, when I'm doing bad technique, I'm hitting it pretty well.